This is Ray Mossholder with a follow-up article from today's mid-afternoon news. In the April 4th, 2023 edition of Epic News, titled Experts Issued New Climate Warnings, but past forecasts hurt credibility. Here's a list of decades of climate predictions that haven't come to fruition and are hurting climate scientists' message. According to climate change believers, humanity has only a few years to act before the whole world irreversibly plunges into an environmental catastrophe of global proportions. But for some of us, this is hard to believe because of dozens of past dramatic predictions that have completely failed to pan out. Environmental experts have been predicting upcoming doom for many decades. Most set dates for when their predicted cataclysm will occur. Usually it's just around the corner only to fizzle out like a deflated balloon. As the failed predictions pile up, climate experts appear to be more cautious in making their predictions too specific. The current general consensus among climate change proponents is that extreme weather events, such as droughts and storms, will become much more prevalent or intense. In fact, we got our fill of it of the catastrophic weather just this past week. The recently released short form report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, known as the IPCC, warns that unless carbon emissions are cut dramatically and promptly, the planet will warm roughly an additional 1.1 to 2.4 degrees by 2100. And that would lead to a high, high risk of wildfire damage, permafrost degradation, biodiversity loss, dry land water scarcity, tree mortality on land, and a loss of warm water corals in the sea. Most of the warnings about severe risks are asserted with moderate or low confidence, meaning that the underlying evidence is lacking or inconclusive. But such predictions regularly rake in millions of dollars from all over the world. The full IPCC report hasn't even been released yet. One of the most famous climate experts, Michael Mann, criticized the IPCC for being, quote, overly conservative in predicting catastrophic consequences arising from climate change, quote, including ice sheet collapse, sea level rise, and the rise of extreme weather events. This was printed in Inside Climate News, but it's been exactly these kinds of bold predictions that have undermined the experts' credibility in the past. Environmentalist Bjorn Lomborg collected such failed predictions in his book, False Alarm, How Climate Change Panic Costs Us Trillions of Dollars. Trillions with a T hurts the poor and fails to fix the planet. Geologist and electrical engineer Tony Heller, who frequently criticizes 
what he considers fraud in current mainstream climate research has made it a recurring theme of his clam, climate science blog to point out failed and dubious predictions. Again, his name is Tony Heller, H-E-L-L-E-R, in case you'd like to take a look. And uh, he's made it a recurring theme. Examples are plentiful, stretching far into the past. Now, here are just a few of the examples. In December 1939, the Harrisburg Sunday Courier reported, quote, all the glaciers in eastern Greenland are rapidly melting. The article read, quote, it may, without exaggeration, be said that the glaciers, like those in Norway, face the possibility of catastrophic collapses. It quoted Swedish geologist Hans Ullmann as saying in a report to the Geographical Society after his Arctic expedition, quote, Arctic ice has been seen receding since at least 1918, according to a New York Times 1923 article, which read, quote, by comparison, this winter sea ice did reach the shore of Spitsbergen. As a matter of fact, the winter sea ice did reach the north coast of Spitsbergen, which is now called Svalbard, though in very low concentrations. No harm done. Back then in 1939, the meltdown left much to the imagination. In May of 1947, Dr. Hans Ullmann, a Swedish geophysicist at the University of California Geophysical Institute, wrote an article in the West Australian that read, quote, The Arctic change is so serious that I hope that an international agency can speedily be organized to study the conditions on a global basis. He went on to write, quote, The possibility of a protegious rise in the surface of the ocean with resultant widespread inundation arising from an Arctic climate phenomena seems inevitable. The geophysicist had predicted a nothing burger. In February 1952, Dr. William Carlson, an Arctic expert, said, quote, the glaciers of Norway and Alaska are only half the size they were 50 years ago. He printed this in the Australian Associated Press, a report that was run by the Cairns Post. Even today, both glaciers are in fine shape. In March of 1989, Arctic explorer Admiral Donald McMillan wrote in New York's Democrat and Chronicle, quote, there are now six million square miles of ice in the Arctic. There were 12 million square miles. Could be a good thing for these prognosticators to wear glasses. In October 1958, the New York Times reported that, quote, some scientists estimate that the polar ice pack is 40% thinner and 12% less in area than it was a half century ago. Then even within the lifetime of our children, the Arctic Ocean may open, enabling ships 
to sail over the North Pole. The Arctic ice sheet was about seven feet thick at that time. Today, in 2023, the Arctic ice sheet is about seven feet. In November 1967, the Salt Lake Tribune reported Paul Ehrlich's prediction of famine by 1975. In his direct words, Paul Ehrlich said, quote, It is already too late for the world to avoid a long period of famine. Ehrlich, a Stanford University biologist and author of The Population Bomb, proposed lacing staple foods and drinking water with sterilizing agents to cut down the growing population of the United States. Thank you, Ebenezer Scrooge. In April of 1970, the Boston Globe wrote that the pollutant expert James Lodge predicted that, quote, air pollution may obliterate the sun and cause a new ice age in the first third of the 21st century. Was there one? No. In October of 1970, Paul Ehrlich was at it again. This time he said that the United States would be rationing water by 1974 and rationing food by 1980. This was reported in the Redlands Daily Facts. In July 1971, an atmospheric scientist, S.I. Rasool of NASA and Columbia University, wrote in the Washington Post, the world could be as little as 50 or 60 years away from a disastrous new age, new ice age. Well, what about global warming? Hmm? In January 1972, the then United Nations Environmental Secretary, Maurice Strong, while studying the world's environmental problems, was quoted in a Swedish newspaper as saying, quote, we have 10 years to stop the catastrophe. Many of you hadn't even been born by 1982, and congratulations, you made it just fine. In December 1972, two Brown University geologists wrote a letter to President Richard Nixon reporting that a conference attended by, quote, 42 top American and European investigators concluded that, quote, a global deterioration of climate by order of magnitude larger than any hitherto experienced by civilized mankind is a very real possibility and indeed may be due very soon. They added, quote, the present rate of the cooling seems fast enough to bring glacial temperatures in about a century if continuing at the present pace. <laughs> Again, excuse my sense of humor, but what does an ice age, or rather, what does ice age and global warming have in common? How do you get them both? Huh? England's Guardian newspaper 
in January 1974, read, quote, space satellites show new ice age coming fast. In June 1974, a Time magazine headline asked, Another Ice Age? Then they wrote, quote, Telltale signs are everywhere, from the unexpected persistence and thickness of pack ice in the waters around Iceland to the southward migration of the warm lumbing creatures like the armadillo from the Midwest. Well, that one pooped out. In January 1978, the New York Times wrote, quote, an international team of the specialists has concluded from eight indexes of climate that there's no end in sight to the cooling trend of the last 30 years, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. And a year later, the paper was reporting the exact opposite. In February 1979, the New York Times reported, quote, there's a real possibility that some people now in their infancy will live to a time when the ice at the North Pole will have melted, a change that would cause swift and perhaps catastrophic changes in the climate. In May of 1992, the New York Times quoted Mustafa Toba, then executive director of the United Nations Environmental Program, saying that if the world didn't change course, it would face, quote, an environmental catastrophe which will witness devastation as complete and irreversible as any nuclear holocaust. Agents France Press in September 1988 wrote, quote, the small island nation of Moldova is at the threat of being completely inundated by a gradual rise in average sea level, the largest rise in 30 years. The French press noted that the end of the Maldives and its people could come sooner if drinking water supplies dry up by 1992 as predicted. As of 2023, the Maldives Islands are still nowhere near underwater. In fact, despite the COVID-19 pandemic's decimation of tourism, the nation still attracts new developments. A development company recently negotiated a $148 million contract to build 120 luxury condos over water and beachfront villas on Maldives' South Mayo Atoll. In June 1989, a senior envir environmental official at the United Nations, Noel Brown, said entire nations could be wiped off the face of the earth by rising sea levels of global warming, if global warming isn't reversed by the year 2000. California's San Jose Mercury News reported Brown's words. Brown had also said coastal flooding and crop failures will create an exodus of eco-refugees threatening political chaos. At the time it was saying that, Brown was the director of the New York office of the United Nations 
Environment Program. This is Ray. I dated Georgia in San Jose long after that date of destruction was bye-bye. In March 2000, David Viner, a senior research scientist at the Climactic Research Unit of England's University of East Anglia, wrote in the Independent, quote, snowfalls are now just a thing of the past. Children just aren't going to know what snow is. In just a few years, winter snowfalls will become a very rare and exciting event. Snowfall, though sparse, still comes to southern England during most winters. How else could you build a snowman? In December 2001, a global warming report commissioned by the United States Congress and quoted by the Washington Post and other major newspapers predicted, quote, the changes in climate could potentially cause the sugar maple industry in New England to end. Today, New England still produces plenty of maple syrup. In 2022, Vermont's production totaled a record high of 2.5 55 million gallons, up 46% from the previous year. In February 2004, England's Guardian newspaper reported on a secret Pentagon report that predicted climate change would lead to nuclear war. Major European cities would sink into the ocean, and Britain would descend into a Siberian climate by the year 2020. In January 2006, Al Gore's movie, An Inconvenient Truth, made a lot of converts in spite of all these failed claims. The Associated Press paraphrased Al Gore when he said, quote, unless drastic measures to reduce greenhouse gases are taken within the next 10 years, which would bring the world to, to 2016, the world will reach a point of no return. Gore, who flies carbon emissions all over the planet, had at one point in his movie a polar bear. Notice now the one standing on an iceberg that appears to be melting. It was the audience was left with the idea that the polar bear would drown when the iceberg melted completely. Al Gore didn't happen to mention that polar bears are tremendous swimmers. In November of 2007, Rhonda Pachuri, then head of the United Nations Climate Panel, was quoted by the New York Times as having said, quote, this year was the defining moment of the climate change fight. If there is no action before 2012, it will be too late. And finally, in November 2007, Canada's Can West News Service reported paraphrasing polar researcher Louis Fortier as saying, quote, the Arctic Ocean could be free of ice by the summer, as soon as 2010 or 2015. 
something that hasn't happened in more than a million years. Well, that's it. You be the judge whether the predictions were right. This would be funny to me if it wasn't that Vice President Kamala Harris is in Africa this week asking for millions of dollars. Why? To stop climate change. While parts of Africa have people that are starving to death.